Salut tout le monde! Hello everybody and welcome to another Key Grape Varieties, this time on Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio, depending if you are French or Italian. My name is Jimmy Smith and um, I am the founder and owner of West London Wine School in London, one of the UK's leading wine education facilities and winner of the WSET 2018 Best Educator of the Year Award. Uh, also owner of South London Wine School and a cool little wine bar called Stretton Wine House down in South London. So I am a wine educator and a wine buyer. My handle at the top, at Wine with Jimmy, is my personal handle. So please contact me for comments and questions if you wish uh, about these presentations. And our websites are listed below for all of our tastings and courses. So we're going to talk about Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio. Now, with all world, uh, wines uh, in the world, with all great varieties in the world, there are many different synonyms, many different names, because of course, dialect, locality, language is exceedingly different. Even if you traverse one country, you will have many different dialects and languages. So therefore, there are many different grape names, synonym names for each of these. So this one is, uh, we haven't actually talked about many synonyms before, but on this one, we will talk about it because it is, um, it's quite famous because it's actually more well known today as Pinot Grigio, which is uh, the Italian name for the variety because it is the country today that grows the most of this great variety, a long way ahead of France where it originates from, or the Rhine, that kind of uh, area where we find it today, Alsace. Um, the Pinot Gris grape variety, as on the previous couple of slides, the, um, the opening slide, you'll see this. The color of the grape is quite interesting. It's a color mutation of, uh, of Pinot Noir, uh, and uh, it is said to have occurred around the same time around Burgundy, the Rhine zone, uh, and in Germany and Southwest Germany. Um, so it is a color mutation uh, of, of Pinot Noir, and, and it has this kind of, the, co the berry color can be anything from kind of grayish color, but all the way up to actually looking very similar to Pinot Noir and having like a blackish skin to it. Um, there are many different color variants on it. Um, now, we have documentation that uh, through the Middle Ages, um, the variety was called Fromento uh, or Formento, as well as it's known, um, which is a bit, uh, a little bit of a confusing grape name because there are other grapes that have been linked to this name as well. Um, but uh, it is widely accepted that Pinot Gris um, it should, you know, was called Fromento in, in the Middle Ages. Um, it also, going to more uh, recent centuries, uh, around the Loire, uh, it was called Auvernach Gris, uh, and uh, Bureau, which is another synonym name for it around sort of Burgundy uh, area, Pinot Bureau, as, as it's sometimes called. Um, so there are other different names as well that has been mentioned and documented in text, but we have certainly quite a bit of history behind this, of course, being a color mutation of the famous Pinot Noir. Um, it also has sometimes been called Malvoisie, certainly in parts around the Alps, uh, the Val d'Aosta in north uh, west Italy, um, which is confusing because the grape name Malvoisie also is another variety or a grape name which is attributed to many other grapes. So it can be quite confusing. It's quite a local name for it. So it's not one that you'll need to know for courses, uh, but you certainly can find that, uh, that grape name. Um, and uh, in Alsace, Pinot Gris um, took on the moniker of Tokai Pinot Gris, and that is nothing to do with the production of, uh, of Tokai in, in Hungary, and it's nothing to do with ferment, the grape. It is actually the grape uh, Pinot Gris taking on the name Tokai because it's kind of like for marketing more than anything. A successful, uh, well-known European wine stemming from Hungary, Tokai, a lovely city in northeast uh, Hungary. Uh, and uh, many kings and queens became very enamored with this style, and um, a lot of grapes kind of adopted the name. Uh, such as uh, Frulano in Fr Friuli Venezia Giulia in the northeast of Italy. That was called Tokai Frulano. Here, Tokai Pinot Gris. Both of those are no longer allowed. Um, so Tokai Pinot Gris in Alsace was banned from 2007. 
the Hungarians had to drop a few things as well because they were calling some of their red wines Medoc wines or Omedoc wines. So that, that had to end on their, their side of the bargain. But uh, yes, it was dropped since 2007. So for nearly uh, 15 years now, we've had um, uh, we've had just Pinot Gris in Alsace and no longer Tokai. They're a bit of a collector's item, in fact. Uh, if you do happen to have a bottle of Tokai Pinot Gris, you could definitely flog it for some serious cash because it's obviously no longer permitted. But uh, as with these, it's better to pop, up, pop open the cork and try it and indulge in a wine of history. Um, now... It was introduced, and we have to talk about this because it's very significant. It was introduced into Italy um, as Pinot Grigio in the early 19th century. So it has been there for a good 20, uh, 200 years, rather, uh, where, of course, it has seriously taken root. You find um, big, dramatic proportions of it uh, in Venetian areas and Friulian areas. So north of Venice, around Treviso. Uh, on the um, on the Piave River and going down towards the uh, Adige River, you find significant volumes of Pinot Grigio being uh, uh, crafted for more simple mass-produced wines. And you will understand this because of the volume you can get in a multiple grocer in the UK. You can go into a, a supermarket and they have about 15 or 20 different types of Italian Pinot Grigio. Very popular style. Um, and uh, yeah, that's our... Uh, that's our final little bit on the, uh, I think that's a final bit on the history, yes. Uh, Pinot Gris uh, or Grigio in the vineyard. We'll talk about the grape generically here, not with a specific location. When we get to the winery, I will actually separate it into Gris and Grigio. Uh, Grigio. Um, so what about the grape itself? So it's a, a grape that's kind of classic white, um, even though it is this kind of reddish blackish skin or gray skin you'll find that it actually quite likes cool conditions uh, or moderate conditions. It's often kind of continental uh, based, but cooler is what it likes. And that's quite important. The colder conditions for Pinot Gris Grigio means that the acids can be a little bit brighter. On a style when they can be, Pinot Gris can actually be quite shy on acid. So the type of terroir, the geology, like a limestone plus a cooler condition means that you can get brighter, fresher styles being produced with uh, with with Pinot Gris. Um, <clears throat> very small ber berries, quite compact, uh, and as mentioned on the previous slide, also quite variable in color from um, the grayish kind of pinkish color all the way up towards uh, looking like Pinot Noir, because um, so there is quite a heavily um, diverse pigmentation behind it. Uh, and of course, this can mean that you can produce rosés from it and you can find them. In fact, the Italians have, have termed, uh, sorry, coined the term uh, Pinot Grigio Blush, which is a, a skin contact version of it, lightly roséed, which you can get quite easily. Um, it is fairly early budding. Uh, it is a problematic vine, uh, certainly in very cold continental areas. Um, where spring frosts can happen. In Alsace, where it's grown significantly, and then across the Rhine in Baden in Germany, frosts are not the most common. They do happen, but because there is a significant amount of protection uh, and it can warm up because of its locations between the Vosges Mountains and then the Schwarzwald, you'll find that there is a fair bit of heat trap there. Uh, and you often find that frosts uh, are not as common as you'd find in places like Champagne, but they can happen and can damage Pinot Grigio or Gris production. It's fairly early ripening as well. And also one mention about the ripening period, the time, um, the window of opportunity for Pinot Gris Grigio is quite short. So the grapes often have to be um, really understood and you need to know your vineyard to pick them at the right time. But this um, short window of opportunity means you can get lots of underripe and towards overripe Pinot Gris. And that will often be light uh, green styles um, all the way up to quite residual sugar heavy styles, um, respectively, after the, the type of ripening. Uh, <clears throat> it's quite uh, it's quite a well growing grape. It's quite vigorous. Will uh, it will shoot a lot. Um, but the amount of crop that it actually produces tends to be little. And that's uh, a reason why we don't tend to see a magnif uh, magnificent amount of it around France today. It's not the biggest producer, it's quite shy. Uh, so it's definitely a grape which is more of a grape of, uh, of love and care and attention. 
Um, now, of course, with some later harvest styles, leaving them on the great vine a little bit longer, you will find that sugars can build up quite nicely, but you do have to be careful with the offset of acidity. Um, the later harvest styles will often be found on soils which will produce grapes with higher acid, so they can combat that. So often limestone, calcareous, marl-based soils are quite important for those fresher styles. Pinot Grigios or Gris. Uh, and then its general range would be low to moderate acidity. Uh, and that, uh, that is often quite Pinot Gris based, but you can get very high acids in Pinot Grigio in Italy. And that's all to do with volume and picking early, which I'm sure we'll look at on the next slide in a second. So let's talk about it in the winery. Now I'm going to break these in these into these two categories, Pinot Grigio and Pinot Gris. Now please make sure that you understand that these are generalizations. Within each of these categories, of course, you will get variant styles, differing styles, but I am going to talk about the bulk, the major style here. So first of all, Pinot Grigio uh, in Italy, um, there's a massive amount produced of this inexpensive drinking wine. There are very good Pinot Grigios made, certainly in the Alto Adige in North Italy, and also on the Slovenian border on, in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia. So you will find um, some lovely styles which are lazy, can be oaked, can be blended, and they are fascinating. But we will be talking on this little list of the more kind of mass market stuff. So the mass market stuff will generally be picked early. This is to um, maintain lower overall potential alcohol levels, maintain higher acidities, and really a delicacy of flavor. Most Pinot Grigio is, is light, uh, it's delicate, high acid with very gentle fruit and flavor compounds, uh, and, and they are sort of mass consumption based wines, most of them. Um, the winemaking techniques will tend to be quite reductive, uh, so meaning without oxygen. Uh, so this is um, stainless steel, uh, exceedingly common, large volumes of it with inoculated uh, yeast. So yeast will be added to, um, to the fermentations. Um, sulfur dioxide levels often quite high, uh, and that's to protect the wines to keep them as fresh as possible. Um, so this is the, the typical way. It will tend to avoid oak, lees, and mallow. Uh, so you'll end up finding an acidic, fresh, lively wine uh, as a style of Pinot Grigio. Pinot Gris, on the other hand, is um, often the name given to the French varietal, of course, but also um, over in, um, uh, in Germany, where it is called Grauburgunder. Grau Burgunder. Um, so it is the other name for it. So uh, Germany, Grau Burgunder in, uh, in France, Pinot Gris. And when you see a Pinot Gris or a Grau Burgunder, they will tend to be more complex. And let's go through why. Um, you will tend to find that the fruit generally is riper. Um, the sites generally are better, better aspect, that's direction of the slope, uh, better, uh, better overall ripening. Um, slope action itself, so good sort of angle towards the sun. And you'll find, therefore, that the wines will tend to be more complex and rounder, potentially lower on acids, depending on the geology. Um, but uh, riper and richer are more complex. Um, they can be still made reductively and still be quite fruity and round, but uh, they can also be made in oak. Uh, certainly, Grauburgunder in Germany, you'll see quite a bit of that. Um, but even in Alsace, you'll find some. Uh, old oak maturations as well, so oxidative to add more complexities to allow oxygen to affect the, uh, the wine. And often there'll be wild yeasts, um, either propagated wild from the vineyards or, or actual wild yeast just on the skins that are used for the fermentation. You may find lees aging uh, to add texture to it. It's not the most common, but you may. Uh, and residual sugars. Um, some Pinot Gris can be bottled, certainly in Alsace, with some residual sugar and late harvest styles will have quite a bit of this. Uh, so you can actually find them being quite unctuous um, with that sugar content. 
So where do we find it? Now, I mean, with most great varieties we've been talking about, the origin is France. France always tops the list, but it isn't the case here. Uh, a worldwide uh, sort of um, phenomenon recently has been that Italy in the last 20, 30 years has hugely championed this variety with huge production levels across its north, northeastern provinces. Uh, so 24 and a half thousand hectares under vine, many of it mass production and mass farming around Veneto uh, specifically. That's the main area for it. Um, Alto Adige tends to be much higher altitude, slower ripening, and in fact can be very interesting and often blended. And Friuli, a variety of Pinot Gris made from uh, quite fresh, quite light, to lisy and oaky, and also to skin contact, so orange examples, certainly on the Slovenian border. Uh, so there are some excellent expressions of Pinot Gris, in fact, uh, found in that area. California, uh, quite a big boom in that uh, from the 1980s, 1990s onwards. Germany, and certainly around Baden, as Grauburgunder, making dry, full-bodied examples. Uh, Australia has a bit of it. Uh, France is down there in fifth place. Uh, and about 90% of that is found in Alsace. So it's a significant player. But really, um, it, it's, a, it's a significant player as a region, but um, very, well, not insignificant, but small production for the general look of Alsace. Moldova, which has snuck into a couple of our charts, uh, has a bit of a production. New Zealand uh, actually shouldn't be the next one down, but I put it down because it's quite important. Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio, two types of labelling is found within New Zealand. And in New Zealand, it normally means either richer, fuller Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio simpler, like with brands like Montana. Um, so that's where we find it. What is it like? So it all depends on whether it's Grigio or Gris, and therefore depends on its production level and picking date. If it is Grigio, often from Italy and picked quite early, you'll expect things like lemon, uh, top right of the picture there, pear in the middle, lime, um, and maybe some floral edges, light floral notes, maybe things like jasmine or chamomile you might get, but they're all very delicate, very high acids, very light bodied, and often towards lower alcohols as well on these styles. Now the richer wines, which will come from Germany and Alsace, so around the Rhine Valley, the Rhine River, you will find um, peaches at the bottom of the picture there, apricots also at the bottom. Um, but also kind of more of an unctuous body feel, a texture, a creaminess, a butteriness sometimes, and nutty notes, walnut and almond to the top left of your picture. Um, so uh, they can be smoky, um, they can be a little bit spicy as well. So they can be really lovely. Um, the trick is to balance the texture and the kind of unctuous nature of Pinot Gris with acid. And that is why it is important to bring geology into it, because calcareous marl based soils and, and, and clay will actually find more brightness to balance the, uh, the texture of the wine. So um, that's a little bit about it. It does age quite well. Um, the very best wines will come from Grand Cru sites in Alsace. Um, but, uh, but yes, it is a, a very interesting grape variety. So. I do hope that you've enjoyed your um, advanced look at Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio. Uh, we do have a beginner's version as well, which is a much more basic look at it. If you have any comments or questions, please get in touch with at Wine with Jimmy. That's me. Um, also, we have our wine schools, West London Wine School and South London Wine School, and then our bar, Stretton Wine House. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed something. I hope you've been, uh, learned something on this uh, on this little short tasting. Thank you so much and see you soon.